Hey friends, welcome back to this episode. I'm curious, in your marriage, have you ever felt judged, shut down, invalidated? Yes, I have. Sign me up for that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was like our routine life. Yes. Oh man, I just was not emotionally safe in our relationship. That's really I what we're talking about today. Either. Well, really what we're talking about in this video is, man, I did not feel emotionally safe in our relationship and neither did you. Right. We weren't showing up safe for each other. And we see that a lot in marriages is not creating, not establishing, not setting up this emotionally safe place where you each can share right. and be heard and understood. Right. Which, you know, we go back to the beginning where, you know, God made human beings to live with open hearts. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, they had open hearts towards yeah. each other and towards God. And then when sin happened, they closed their heart. They hid. They had shame. They had guilt, pain. Mm. You know, and this is all fear. And we also relate to this as thorns yeah. in our own teaching. And when that happens, we learn to close off our hearts. And sometimes this happens at a young age. You learn that, wow, I can't trust people. People hurt me. People betray me. People leave me, abandon me, those sorts of things. And so we learn that people are not emotionally safe. So I have this wall that's there. Yeah. Are you relating to that? This wall that we put up block mm -hmm. by block, block by block that keeps getting put up. Because you hurt me. So I have to you have this. You make me feel some sort of way. Yes. And so I can't be vulnerable. I can't tell you how I feel. I can't share my thoughts and feelings with you. And because you don't feel emotionally safe to be able to do that. You don't right. feel like you can act actually open up and be safe to share it. Because if you do, is he going to shut me down? Is he going to judge me? Is he going to uh, invalidate what it is that I'm saying? I don't want to feel that way. He's going to tell me I told you so. I don't want to feel that way. So it's better for me not to share. Right. right? And right how, which is how can we reverse that? That's the enemy's plan, you know, all is. along is to put us on opposite teams and break that unity bond that right. we have. Yeah, there is an enemy and it's not your spouse. Ephesians 6, it says that, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not our spouse. It's not our, our kids. It's not our boss. But there is an enemy. He's real. Yeah. That's who we're wrestling against. And Yeah, and, and because if you really look inside, if you're the spouse that's doing these things, or maybe both spouses... If you really look inside your heart, is that really who you want to be? Right. No. It's not who don't. I want to be, but I'll tell you what happens is I'm like, well, you're already acting that way or you're already being that way. Right. And so why not? Right. And then we're just these two kids acting like two kids. Yeah. But that's not what, the way we're meant to have communication. That's not the way that God intended for us to have relationships. Right. Let's create this emotionally safe place. And we don't have the time to share all of the details or all the ways to do it right now. But we did want to give you three. Yeah. Three, three ways. effective <laughs> ways. Three very effective ways to have good emotional safety in a conversation. Yeah. And they're simple. And when we say them, you're going to think, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> That's how I felt. I'm right. like, this stuff is like simple stuff. It is. It's just yeah. training yourself that what you've always been doing is not getting you any new results. So you have to try something new. Yeah. And that's what we're sharing today. So the first thing is I listen to understand, not to respond. And if you look for a moment that when you're listening to your spouse, maybe they're sharing something and you disagree and you're thinking it's all wrong. Are you thinking about what you're going to say next? Is that what your thought process is while your spouse is talking? And then I'm, I'm sure if you look, you may notice that you tune out. You don't really hear what they're saying because you're in your own I'm mind. I'm formulating what I'm going to say back to you. <laughs> because that's really important. I need that's to defend right. myself. I need to be ready for this. And as soon as you stop talking, I'm going to jump right in there. Which means I've stopped listening. Right. I'm not, I'm not listening. listening. I'm missing it. There's actually something for you in the listening you will discover something that you don't discover when you're listening to respond. Yeah. You may even hear your spouse's heart in that. Which is the ultimate goal, really? Because there's the words that she's saying, there's the body language that you have, there's the tone that you have, and all that makes up a lot of communication. Right. But really, what you're doing with all those things is you're communicating something that's more deeper level in your heart of what you really want, right. what's really going on in the background. Right. That's what I'm going to listen for. Yeah is that. And I can't do it if I'm over here 
formulating what I'm going to say back. I need to listen to understand, like, what is it you're really saying in this conversation? Yeah, absolutely. And if you're really relating to this, I want to just encourage you. I'm going to put a link here as long as he remembers to put it there. And <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh, it's a callback. <laughs> it's a callback. You'll have to watch last week's video on trust. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll put a link here and um, it'll take you to our emotional safety course. It's a low affordable price that each and every marriage can bring that in and have a growth mindset around how can we really create great emotional safety with each other to hear you and be heard and begin developing that deeper intimacy. So we just wanna encourage you, if this is really relating to you, you're gonna to wanna to check out that course. It goes much deeper than what we're going into today. Number two really goes in alignment with what you've said is number one is yours is listening to understand versus listening to respond. Mm -hmm. And then how to effectively do that is by having a speaker and a listener. They're delineated. They're two different separate roles and responsibilities. Right, and, and this sounds so like simple, but guys, like this is something that we did not know. We talked over each other. Yeah. We shut each other down. Very ineffective. So ineffective. So what that means is as the speaker, I have limited time, by the way, because I can't expect you to remember long dialogue. 10 minutes of a dialogue. So I want to stay less than two minutes or so. And I want to really get to the point of what it is I'm saying, not get in the weeds, but I want to really share whatever it is I need to share in this conversation. Yeah. And then during that time, I really need you to be the listener. That means you're right. actively engaged in listening. So I'm going to do my part by not making it long. Right. I'm going to do my part by making it concise and to the point. I'm not going to go all over the place in different rabbit trails. That's not effective. And then you're listening. You listen to understand. Mm -hmm. And then you get an opportunity to be a speaker. And we switch roles. She gets the microphone. My I turn. get the listening ear. Now you're the speaker. Yeah, a lot of times it would end up it was like this because yeah. we were so ready to grab the mic away and be the one to defend or yeah. say you're wrong about that or how could you this and that <laughs> this is not effective. This is exactly how it has to happen though when you give the mic back. It has to happen this way or else it's going to go back, revert back to listening to uh, respond is I need you to repeat back what you heard me say. Yeah. That has, that's the only way to effectively listen. Because that way. listening to respond gets in the way that I misunderstand what it is you're yes. really saying. Or I and don't enemy, say it what I'm actually wanting to say. Right? It doesn't come it, out right. I until won't know I it until you repeat it. Rehear it. And I'm like, wait a second. That's, that's right. not what I meant at all. Can't tell you how many times that has happened where I'm like, ooh, if you would have been left with that, that would have been bad. <laughs> yeah. So it's an opportunity to clarify. So that's really important also. Yeah. So speaker, listener. And then when I pass the mic to her, you're gonna clarify what you think you heard me say. That's and right. then it goes back and forth and it does take time. Communication takes time Good and intentionality. quality communication. That's right. It's about the heart. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, you're gonna to wanna to come from curiosity rather than judgment. Say it louder for us over in the back. <laughs> curiosity rather than judgment. Yeah, I have a hard time hearing that one. That's our biggest quarrel in our marriage probably is this whole judgment thing. Mm. And you have come a long Thank way. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's really cool to see how much, how much growth you've had in that. Thank you. Yeah. It pops up occasionally now and I'm like. <laughs> yeah. I don't create an emotionally safe place where we talked about at the yeah. very beginning of this video. When I hear her from judgment, when I am already coming to this conversation, expecting judgment. I'm going to hear judgment. And then it shuts it. me down. I'm like, how can you see me that way? Right. I am like, so not judging you right now. I'm just asking a question. But I can't hear it if I'm expecting it. I hope that yeah. lands. I know that's landing with you right now. I, I can't hear her if I'm expecting judgment. I can only hear judgment. Yeah. And so, wow, I, what do I do? You gotta let go of that. You gotta let go of that and really be curious with your spouse. Hey. I'm not quite understanding rather than thinking ill thoughts yes. about your spouse, negative thoughts that I can't believe she just said that. I can't believe he said that, whatever. Rather than doing that, just ask them, I'm not sure I really understand. Can you say more about that? Help me understand what you're saying. Yes. Allow your spouse to say it. And, you know, being curious, asking good questions to gain clarity so that you can really see their heart and motive behind what it is they're saying. 
there are so many times that you say something and it's a little off-putting and I'm like, I don't really know how to take that. And it's really easy for me to be like, what did you mean by that? To be offended. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference when I'm like, hey, I'm not sure I understand what you meant by that. Can you tell me more? Right. Or can you just say more about what that comment meant? And then you're probably getting more closer to what my heart is meaning. Yeah, I learned. And it's like never whatever it is I thought. I'm always surprised. Like, oh, yeah. okay, well, that makes sense to me then why you did that or said that or whatever. Yeah, I really have to get to the point where I am expectant of you being for me. Yeah. I'm expectant of you being on my team rather than against me. That I have goodwill, good intentions for you, that my thought processes are positive around you and how you think about me. Yeah. I have to, Romans 12, 2, I have to do a re transforming, a renewing of my mind. Yeah. So, so remembering curiosity rather than judgment. And every time you're curious rather than judgmental, your spouse will learn to start lowering those walls, yeah. that you're not going to judge them for whatever it is that they're going to share. And before you know it, these just these three steps will start to begin to create more intimacy yeah. and better communication. Yeah, it's my prayer that you would just take just take one of these. You don't need to take all three. Just take one of these and practice it and see how it lands. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Make that 1% shift in your marriage that you're committed to being more emotionally safe. And over the long run, that 1% shift gets bigger and bigger because you're showing up more and more safe. Those new neural pathways are wiring together and you're making choices that align that way. Right. So now is a great opportunity for you to look inward. How am I showing up in my relationship with my spouse? Am I showing up emotionally safe? Are my words and actions, am I doing things that... I shouldn't be doing maybe sarcasm or anger. anger or the way that I'm responding or maybe acting out these things that are just creating this divide between this relationship. And how can I show up more safe in this relationship? That's right. Just do that internal reflection. We hope this video helps you to be a better communicator and create emotional safety in your marriage. And we just want to take a minute to say thank you. Thank you for watching our channel. We have had so many of you say that you have watched all of our videos and we just want to say thank yeah, you for your thanks. support. Each time you watch one of our videos, especially when you give a thumbs up or even consider subscribing, it boosts our channel up on YouTube where they start blasting it out to more people who are interested in marriage topics. And so just by you communicating and commenting and sharing where you're from, watching our videos, it is supporting our ministry and helping other couples heal. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on today's episode and we're excited to see you next week. Yes. Bye. Bye. I'm going to practice not controlling you. Yes, thanks. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us. Hello there. Hey friends, and welcome back to this episode. Have you ever felt... No. Hey friends, and welcome back to this episode. So... Airplane. I kind of like having a lawnmower outside. Mm -hmm. Hey friends, and welcome back to this episode. In your marriage, have you ever felt judged, shut down, <laughs> invalidated? Judge, shut down, validated. Let's redo really that. <laughs> and so, ever since then, human beings, it's the same thing today. Let me just do that ever. And fear. Let me do that ever. And those new, those new neural pathways are. are those new neural pathways are wiring together and you're making choices that align that way.